welcome to another Out the Saddle production. So the cyclist that you see here is Mark Jagger. Mark Jagger is local to the North Yorkshire area and I've known him for a few years now. He is a remarkable cyclist with uh, the record holding time for the fastest Everesting time on, on, a, on a UK hill. And he's also done uh, a lot of other notable achievements, including his, his recent success in racing. Uh, the point of this video was to was to basically interview Mark and just ask him a few questions about what he thinks about the sport and and how he goes about with his with his daily daily challenges, if you like. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it and, and I hope you get a, a lot of valuable tips from him because I think anyone can can learn from um, a chap like this who's who's done so many incredible things on his bike. Thank you very much. Just to go through some of um, Mark's stats, he's done about 25,000 miles this year on his bike. Done about 1.4 million feet of climbing. Um, and over the last four weeks, he's averaged about 500 miles a week. So Over the last few weeks? So over the course <laughs> of the year? Yeah, 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 absolutely, exactly. Um, so do you remember what got you into cycling originally? Commuting mainly from uh, Morley to Dewsbury. Then I just noticed, uh, without any real effort, I was keeping up with the uh, more established club riders on a hybrid bike while they were on road bikes. So I just decided to put my savings to some use, get myself a road racing bike, start testing myself properly with bigger distances, and just took it from there. What keeps you motivated to ride as much as you do? Well, I'm a Yorkshireman for a start, and uh, so I can lay good claim to being the cycling capital of the UK. We've got the Tour de Yorkshire and we hosted the Tour de France. So, so, so did you did you uh, watch the 2014 Tour come through? Unfortunately not. And I've been ribbed about that a few times, saying if I had a true cycling fan I'd be taking the day off. Yes, I do regret it, but uh, I've spectated a fair few races since and partaken in a few myself, so made up for some lost time I'd say. So um, so what, what keeps you motivated to ride as much as you do with doing all those century rides? Ticking off the hill climbs, like this one for example. Uh, Simon Warren's book was definitely a key part in uh, going out there getting them ticked off. Believe it or not I used to think uh, Sutton Bank was the hill of all hills and it's probably not even in the top 30 toughest in Yorkshire. Using Strava as well, I'll admit that's uh, played a big part as well. I was, uh, I was very very fanatical about my stats before using Strava, but since using Strava, it's uh, up the ante a bit, to say the least. So, we're at the top of Whitehorse Bank. Um, I just suffered my way up there, but Mark sort of did it a lot easier than me. A bit of wheel spin though, on the steep bit. Not one of the easier climbs when it's wet, it has to be said, but... If you were to describe Everesting to a layman, what would you, what would you, how would you describe it? Um, a combination of immense physical endurance and mental endurance rolled into one. Once you know you've got the cardio level, it's more a head game than a physical game. Right. You know it's physically possible, but the battle of repetition, you know. It's the sort of thing most people have set out to do, get maybe a quarter of the way through, realise how far there is to go and then just decide we're going home early. So how many times have you Everested? Five times so far, three times doing it the normal way, reps of the same hill and twice as a route. Despite the extra mileage, it's actually a lot easier as a route than repping the same hill, because like I say, you're not battling repetition, you're actually doing, taking in different scenery, different hills. So, so um, the route that you did, where you didn't rep, uh, where did you the go there? Routes, um, the first one was um, mainly a central Pennine base one. I started out in Nidderdale, I'm well, living in Haddigate. Started out in Nidderdale, worked my way into Wharfdale, Calderdale, further south in the central Pennines towards South Yorkshire, finishing in Sheffield. Another great area of cycling prestige. That was, a, that was a general idea, plus taking in the cobble classics around Calderdale and starting and finishing in two areas with great cycling history, history heritage. Someone shot it with an air rifle, haven't they? Yeah.
Um, we've cycled across the tops from Whitehorse Bank to the top of Botby Bank. Um, have you done Botby Bank, Mark, that climb? Plenty of times. In fact, uh, when I first ticked it off, I was going by uh, Simon Warren's 7 out of 10 rating. He's since admitted that that's the most disputed difficulty rating he's ever given. And it's definitely an 8 or a 9 out of 10. Probably the latter when it's damp like this. Uh, I've always done it as part of a North Yorkshire Moors loop ride. Luckily, always earlier on in the ride. Just uh, saving uh, Caper Hill and Rosedale Chimney for later on, the even tougher ones, like you do. I wouldn't recommend doing it the day after an Everest anyway, like I did earlier in the year. It's supposed so, to be a recovery ride. Talk, talking of recovery, um, you never, that's not really something in your dictionary, is it? No, no. Uh, it's uh, pretty common knowledge I don't rest up properly, even for races. Though that is something I'm going to change next season. As I've said all year, I mean, no disrespect intended, but I knew I could do the three, four races and still get the points I needed to get my goals just about without resting up properly and I did set myself the 25,000 mile target at the start of the year and I'm one of those when I set myself targets with stats I'm going to bloody, bloody well hit them. Fair play so, so um, in terms of your um, entry into racing you haven't actually been racing for that long really only a few years. Um, the last two years and this was my first full season so to speak where last season I only did two or three uh, this season it was the through the peak of the season a weekly, on a weekly basis. A lot of learning curves to be conquered, I mean, knowing when to attack, relying on my solo ability, and but knowing when to hold the wheels as well equally, because yeah, you're not racing against mugs. And in most cases, I've got more experience than me, and that's a big factor as well, as well as just pure ability. Did surprise me a lot of the crits as well, even though I don't have myself down as a sprinter. I put myself more in the climber category, but I've worked hard in the last year to improve on the sprinting game, and that certainly helped me to a fair few points at the flatter circuits, shall we say. Okay, and um, you, you mentioned before that you were uh, looking at racing for a sort of semi semi sort of pro team. Um, yeah, pro log. They're not semi pro, they're just an amateur team, ah. but a very strong amateur team. Uh, solid Cat 2 racers, the odd Cat 1. Or rider aiming for cat one and taking it from there some people would say me included probably that you have quite a unique style of riding in terms of your position and your cadence um, do you want to take us through that and, and why you think it helps your riding uh, basically I just go on uh, gut instinct and what I've seen from others other uh, pros in their uh, positioning and techniques uh, I like to think I've improved on my descending, getting aero, aerodynamic. That's something uh, that was missing definitely in the er earlier days. Uh, I kept uh, getting spat on descents just through uh, not tucking in properly. I'd be pedalling away and they'd just be gliding down in the aero tuck position and uh, getting a gap on me in no time. So uh, it's a weakness I've, uh, I've improved on anyway. As long as I'm feeling the pain, but making equally making good time, I know I'm doing okay. And getting a gap on others, of course. For those of you that know you on Facebook, I'm sure have seen loads yeah. of screenshots from Strava and lots of con continuous pros about yes, various uh, rides. What drives you to write a blog, blog post on Facebook? Because obviously it takes a lot of your time. Just good to share the experience and uh, have the feedback from people saying, I've motivated them to get out more on the bike as well. Plus it's all in my head straight after a ride as well, the experience of it all, all feeling on certain efforts. Shameless KOM hunting, for example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just nice to express the experience in work, in writing. I've always felt that in writing I could express myself a lot better. So it's all, also good to share the um, landscapes as well. It's, uh, it's not called God's Own County for no reason and uh, there's certain people on cycling pages on the other side of the pond that really like to uh, view uh, pictures of rural England and uh, yeah, the North, North Yorkshire Moors, Calderdale, the Yorkshire Dales, Nidderdale. It doesn't really get any better than that. 
Yeah, because I know that you um, you post a lot of content on the Alcat Cycling Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. So well, basically, I just share, share it on my own page and then specifically share the same post for the Alcat Cyclists. And uh, I love our reactions for the landscape photos from uh, certain American models. No naming required. <laughs> and so, in terms of um, where your cycling career is going to go going forward, have you got any like big, big rides planned? Um, um, well, next year will be more emphasised on the racing front, but I uh, do plan to do more Everest, Tapping Hill in Nidderdale, that's on the bucket list, and another Everesting route, um, a coast from west coast to east coast. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Taking in plenty of carbs. Thank you. <laughs> Always remember to carb up, kids. <laughs> So, so, so you're planning on Everest in Trapping Hill, which yeah, is a climb in the So do you, want to, do you want to talk us through that climb? It's um, an average of around 10, 11% maximum, close to 20. Used to have a very smooth surface when they used it for the Tour de Orchard in 2017. They've since gravelled it, so it makes it even more of a challenge. All that's to the game, so... It's... Um, the Everesting route I've planned will cover about 350 miles and at least 35,000 feet of climbing, taking in the South Lakes, Eastern Cumbria, the Orchard Dales, recovery spin across the Vale and then the North Yorkshire Moors, finishing on the East Coast. That might just be my new best ever when it's pulled off. Uh, so, so when, when, when are you planning that ride then? Uh, about middle of next year, mid June, when the days are at the longest, minimum night riding. But we'll, we'll have to do a fair few hours in the dark as well with a very good USB light. We've ridden for about half an hour since the cafe stop, and um, you obviously tucked in there. Um, what are your kind of thoughts on nutrition, especially if you're doing endurance riding like Everesting or other epic stuff? I'd say eat a lot, but not all at once. Take a lot of on-the-go food with you. I am guilty of neglecting that quite a bit, I'll admit. Especially on the waterfront, as you can see, I've got no, uh, I haven't even got a water cage on my bike at the time of speaking. <laughs> it's your hill climb season's just over though. Prior to that, I had it on all summer. Only the one cage though, not two. But uh, yeah, uh, Keep up with hydration and eat a lot, but not all at once. Cereal bars, gels, high carbs and protein, obviously. They do keep you going for a lot, lot longer. So do you think that um, your nutrition is kind of similar, irrespective of the distance you're riding, or do you do specific things for certain events? On the, on, on the longer rides, naturally, I do eat a lot more. On, when I know I'm not burning as many calories, I do try and cut back on the self-indulgent foods. But yeah, on, on the longer rides, it can be a case of you've just eaten a reasonably sized meal and half an hour down the road, because you've, you've burnt so many calories prior to that point, you can get half an, half an hour down the road and it's like you haven't eaten in a week. And uh, certain parts of uh, the national parks where cafe stops, shop stops are few and far between. Unless you go banging on some farmer's door begging for food. Have you done that yet? No, I, I haven't quite had to stoop to that. The closest I've come to that is uh, just begging him to cook food in a pub for me after, after cooking hours. Oh, that's happened to me as well. <laughs> and they did, to be fair. I, so, I owe them another visit, to say the least. Great. So, um, just like, looking at your sort of palmares, um, the one thing that stuck out for me is being relatively average was your longest your biggest climb which is about two and a half thousand Dunfell, yeah and that's including the bit build up to great dunfell from appleby not just great dunfell itself as well it's uh the best elevation gain you're going to get in the uk anyway but uh i know what you're building towards here that i should try some of the uh, european climbs so go on fire fire away <laughs> well i mean um what are there any sort of climbs that you have your eye on in particular, uh, be it home or, or abroad? Yeah. The two obvious ones are Mont Ventoux, Alp de Huez. They're like the two um, holy grails of cycling climbs in general. 
though uh, the summer in Italy as well, using the Gordo that Simon Warren's just finishing a book on uh, those as well, should be a good read. And uh, I've got a feeling they'll be even more challenging as well. Although, even though they don't have quite the same prestige, but uh, ultimately it's a challenging aspect to look for, more than the actual prestige, I'd say. So, I look cool. through the book of climbs and look, at, uh, mainly focus towards the 9 and 10 out of 10s. But I'll also look for the ones that provide the best experience as well. I, the scenery, the epic rewarding scenery on the way up and from the summit. Like uh, Fleet Moss is a 9 out of 10, but it's definitely one of the best in the UK as an all-round experience. So, in fact, it's still my favourite Yorkshire climb, probably. Um, if you were to sum up why you cycle, what would, what would you say to that? Originally, I'd say it was a form of stress relief, and to a much lesser extent these days, it still is. Uh, you know, to take out your frustrations on your uh, hill efforts and in the races is a great way of relieving their tension to say the least. In fact, uh, I've said many times that uh, physical pain on the bike is like a protective co cocoon compared with uh, mental strains. And uh, yeah, I have battled depression to a certain extent before, so yeah. Same uh, mainly just for um, peace of mind and uh, tension relief. And I uh, used to travel around with my grandparents a lot in the car on a lot of the roads I cycle on to this day. So trips down memory lane as well. The cafe we were in earlier was a regular cafe stop. On the weekends I'd be out with my grandparents. And so um, if you were to try and encourage more people to get into riding, because I mean, I think it's fair to say that we've we've both benefited a lot from the sport. So, what yeah. what what would you say to any any guys that are looking to get into the sport, uh, or, or anyone that's looking to push push their limits in the sport? What 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 sort of advice would you have there? Well, I'd make no bones about it. It is uh, very physically demanding, and if you are to um, climb up the categories in racing, you do need the natural ability as well. I know people say that people with no athletic bones in the body can go places in uh, triathlons and stuff, but you, you do need the natural ability if you're really going to compete at the pointy end. But then again, anyone can improve the fitness, that door's always there. You've just got to have the willingness to open it. Yeah, it's just a great way to um, well, see the world or see the scenery around you that, that's even uh, close to your doorstep. The amount of people uh, I've heard say, oh, I had no idea this uh, sort of scene was even on my doorstep until I got out. There's mm -hmm. that side of the equation as well. Yeah. Great. All right, well, thanks very much for, for your time. And uh, I'm sure we'll hear back from you soon. Take care, mate.